All right, you ready for this? All right, and we hit deliver, and then... I know you don't believe this is possible, but I'm about to bowl this without touching anything. Wait for it, wait for it, wait for it, and here it goes. Welcome back to the Diet Badass Tour. If you saw that intro, that was me bolusing remotely from a phone. It's absolutely insane and that is a small bell and whistle of looping. So we are outside the DeSimone house here in Paso Robles in California and they have got Cassie and I hooked up to looping. And if you're wondering what that is, it is an iOS app that connects a continuous glucose monitor to a pump to bring automated blood sugar control. And it's really insane. So let me dive into what parts you need, how much it costs, what the app actually features and what's possible with it, the pros of it, and then maybe we'll talk about the cons a little bit. But this is such an exciting day because I've heard about this for years and it's finally happening. All right, it's important to understand where most type 1 diabetics come from. So they normally wear a pump. We kind of think this thing is automated, but it's not super manual. So then eventually we get on a continuous glucose monitor, such as the Dexcom G5. This thing sends you blood sugar updates every five minutes. And unfortunately, these two things don't talk at all, even if you're on the same system like the Medtronic and Light. So that CGM doesn't really talk to the pump. It, you know, maybe displays information, but boluses and insulin dosage is never actually automatically administered. So, so that's where we have the Riley link come in. So the Riley link, this piece of equipment, allows the continuous glucose monitor to talk to the pump and for pump information to be sent back to the continuous glucose monitor. And, and once this system is set up, this platform, you begin to loop. That is when you're called a looper. All right, so what's really cool is like for less than $250, you can be set up on automated like bolusing, basal rates, like actual automated blood sugar control. Now, now it's not a perfect system. We've we've been on this for less than one day and Cassidy had a pretty bad low last night. Uh, I've actually been pretty much in range, but people say this is like life changing. And, and for me personally, as an athlete with type 1 diabetes, the hardest part is overnight highs or overnight lows. And, and for me, I only have a static way of dealing with this, right? So I can either set a temporary basal rate, um, I can try to do basal testing, but imagine one day where I eat a huge meal right before bed and I go into the night maybe high. If I don't wake up, I'm going to have that high all night. And, and if I'm low, I actually have a, a tough time waking up from my lows. So I might have that low for an hour or two and then finally wake up. And now with the looping app, it's actually able to auto-correct and auto-balance that over time and, and smooth out lows and get rid of highs over time, leading to much better control and just reducing the burden all around. So uh, it's pretty incredible. And, and right now, let's dive into the app and, and show you what the interface looks like, what it's possible, and, and there's a lot of cool features here. Hey everyone, I'm just going to walk you through the looping app. It's pretty uh, simple to use and pretty straightforward. So I'm going to launch it right here, the loop on the home screen. And this is the, this is the home screen that you're welcome to. So I'll start in the upper left-hand corner. That complete green circle uh, shows that I'm in closed loop right now. So you can actually run this in um, open loop, which means kind of you're able to bowls and stuff from your phone, but it won't actually automatically make all the decisions for you, but I'll get into that. Um, 81 right here, I'll quickly open that up. That's pulling it in from the Dexcom app. Um, then I'll go right back. That orange line is my last amount of insulin given. Uh, the reservoir is actually how much is in my reservoir, how much insulin's on my pump. And then finally, that upper right-hand corner is my pump battery. All right, so this is now in landscape mode, so a little bit different, but hopefully better to view on the computer. So this top graph is glucose. This is pulling it in from the Dexcom CGM. And so you can see in the past what my blood sugar looked like in this gap. It was just when I actually disconnected to record this video beforehand. 
And what's fascinating is that when you get to this dotted line here, or this dashed line, that's actually my predicted glucose going into the future. So you'll constantly see this line adjusting itself based off the other two values I'm about to show you. And that's the active insulin and insulin delivery. So you see this active delivery insulin, that's actually recommended doses as I eat, as I adjust, and it shows you right here. So right, this is dinner time and all the insulin fading off from it. And then below this is actually the insulin delivery. Um, you might be noticing there's triangles for boluses and then the you know kind of rectangles are basal. And what's fascinating is that, so I actually had a low up here that you can see right here. So this low is that I over bolus for dinner. And then I actually have negative insulin, if that makes sense. So this is my pump temporarily being suspended to help bring my low up. So it kind of makes it so you have milder lows is the theory behind it. And then you can see my active carbohydrates. So um, you can see my, my dinner. I thought there was going to be way more carbs. So it loaded up on insulin. Then it started backing off once it realized I was going low. And, and now I'll show you actually how you bolus. So in the bottom left-hand corner, you eat that dinner plate. And it prompts you how many carbs are you eating. So it could be 25. I'm eating this, you know, right now at 912. And then there's three different types. So you have a lollipop saying something kind of high carb, going to burn off quickly. Tacos, kind of 80% of what everything falls under. And then pizza is those high fat, kind of high carb meals, right? You know, peanut butter, pizza, anything else under that category with a lot of cheese or something. So if we did taco, if I save that, it actually prompts me to take 4.35 units. And if you tap the top, it matches it on the bolus. And now if I accept this hit deliver, it'd go right to my pump from my phone. That's what you saw in the intro, but we'll cancel this. This button right here, uh, as I activate, that's if you want to kind of prepare yourself for a meal. So some people like to pre-bolus. So you'll see that blue line change. Let me do it one more time. So my target's right, nine, at, right now at 95. I hit this, it brings it down a little bit. Uh, so you could use that before eating. And then this is the bolus, the double down arrows. You just saw that. And then this is exercise. So right now my target's at 140. Like I said, for one hour above that. And so that's what the system will try to bring me towards. So it's gonna say, instead of trying to always reach at 95, it's gonna bring me up to that 140. And what's really, really fascinating is that I get to choose what all these numbers are. Uh, I can't stress how important that is for our community and what's so amazing about the do-it-yourself looping community is that you can say, I want my target 95, I can want it to be 100, I can be 120, it can be 140 if you want. And so I can just change that. Um, and then this bottom arrow, you kind of learn more once you actually use the app, but it's kind of like um, setting up, you know, your actual pump ID, setting up your transmitter, and you know, your insulin model. So that's just all kind of set up and then a little bit of troubleshooting. And overall, that's what's really nice about looping versus open APS is that looping has kind of, it's more controlled, so it's easier to use. Where open APS, you can think about it as kind of more collaborators, so there's more features, but it's a little more difficult to use. Now, if you're looking at this and you're like, this is insane, it is. It's kind of like the do-it-yourself version of the 670 that Medtronic recently released. And that brings me to an important point of what you actually need to start looping. So, so you need a Riley link. That's like that the communication device I showed in the intro video. That is $135 and you can order it online. I'll put a link below. There's like an option to build your own, but like you can also just get it pre-made and sent home. There's like a one to two week lag time I've heard when actually ordering these things. Then you will need a 99 subscription to become an app developer. All for Apple important. All the instructions are there. It just enables you to actually put it on your phone. Pretty cool. And then the final crucial piece is you need an old Medtronic pump. I'm gonna make the analogy of this is kind of like hunting for old iPhones. I'm gonna read the list of pumps that currently work. This is the Medtronic 15 series. So that's 715 or 515, the 722 or the 522, the 723 or the 523. And then the final series is the 54 if you're international. So, so if you happen to have T1D for like 10 years and you have these old pumps, check out looping. And also, if you have these old pumps and you're not using them, please, please, please 
check out the link below and consider giving them away. There are people in this community that want to loop, want to have automated control and need these old pumps. That is the missing piece to really make this widespread. The DIY community is actually trying to what's known as break the Omnipod. So that would make it so you could actually loop on the Omnipod, but that is not available. It's currently the old Medtronic pumps. Once again, the 23, the 22, the 15, and the 54. So check all of that out below. If you're at all interested, leave a comment, but also check out Loop Docs. Dot com. So that's loopdocs.com. All this will be in the description and every step is there because of people like Katie DeSimone who we just stayed with who got us set up on looping and a huge community that is dedicated on making this disease much easier and not waiting for the future. So thank you that to everyone that's watched this, leave a comment, check it out. If you're at all interested, reach out to me on Instagram or anything and I will try to answer your questions. All right, until then, I'll give you guys updates on how it's going, but looping seems amazing. This waterfall is 10 feet shorter <laughs> than the cliff she jumped, jumped off. Don't do it. Don't do it. So there's Don't a tourist it. on the ground watching this and had to rescue him because when he landed in the water, he just got knocked out. That was terrible. <laughs> and hers was 10 feet higher. Whoa. Oh my God. <laughs> it's too high to jump. That's the answer. Too you jumped off something that was 10 feet higher than that? Yeah. Are you? Yeah, There's sure. another That's video. Right. That is so tall. Wow, that Here was is. like 90 feet. Here's the better view. Here's expecting. the view from a tourist. Oh my Whoa. god. Yeah, so watch the guy. He's a badass. <gasps> oh my god, oh my wow. god. She jumped off of that.